on today's episode of Gathering the Kings. As an entrepreneur, even when you have success, you start to realize that your limitation is now time. And my mission is, at this point, it's financial wellness. It's just helping other people to be financially free. So many of us are trapped in a job that we hate, working for a boss that we don't even like, and it's the most miserable feeling. And my job is to make you Superman. My job is to turn you into a work imposter where you put on a uniform as Clark Kent and that's your costume. You are Superman now. So you show up to work, you put on this uniform and you're like, this isn't me anymore, I'm Superman. I wanna go fly. Yeah. I wanna go do what I wanna do all day. So my job is to help people with that uh, journey. It's so rewarding and it's just what I love to do every day. You are listening to Gathering the Kings with Chaz Wolf, featuring fellow seven, eight, and even nine figure business owners who have real battle scars from business and life, but have prevailed as the king that they are designed to be. We welcome high performing entrepreneurs to the stage in order to reveal the real of the real on what it takes to build a successful business today. We dissect the good and bad decisions they've made along the way that give a true and accurate picture of the journey of success and how you too can get there. Through this dialogue, you will learn the value of growing your network and surrounding yourself with power players and kings like today's guest. Grab your pen and notebook because we're about to dive in. What's up, everybody? I'm Chaz Wolf, Gathering the Kings podcast. I'm your host. Coming back to you here today with another king on the stage, Brian Grimes, my brother. How we doing? Doing great. Thanks for having me. Yeah, man. We were just chatting. Before we get into it too deep, you're like, dude, I just came from the park. I had an outdoor <laughs> exercise. I like, bring the heat. I'm like, oh, there's going to be plenty <laughs> of heat here. Brian, tell us what kind of business that you got, man. Well, I'm, I'm doing deals for myself. So I consider myself a real estate developer. I'm always, you know, buying and doing a birth strategy, flipping houses, just doing full gut renovations. I've done over 300 full guts. And um, wow. I uh, help up busy entrepreneurs to invest in real estate to get their foot in the door from all different walks of life. So whether you're just getting started and trying to break free from the nine to five, or if you're a busy entrepreneur and you're just looking for leverage, like how to invest out of town in more affordable markets. So just helping other entrepreneurs to get that same type of freedom with real estate that I've gotten. I love it, man. 300 full gut flips is a big deal. That's a, that's a lot of project management, a lot of money yeah. flowing in and out. You've yeah. made a lot of money and probably lost a little bit of money on some of them deals as well. If I can oh, yeah. only take, take a guess or two, but a lot of experience is what I'm hearing. And also then you're now not only just willing, but you've created something that helps other people do the exact same thing, which I absolutely love and want to support the idea of investing in real estate. I'm a big real estate investor myself, but what I find uh, a lot of entrepreneurs that I come across, maybe listeners listening right now is that they hear you know, real estate, they hear TikTok videos about passive income or whatever, but they're like, oh, I don't know what to do. How do I do it? <laughs> yeah. And so yeah. hopefully we can uncover some of those secrets here this morning with you. But also I know that you'll give them a, an opportunity to find you and, and maybe connect with your program and get the full, full access as well. So Brian, before we get rolling, I want to know for you, you said you've done, like I said, 300 deals, a lot of success. But like, what's the why? Why are you still doing it? Why'd you go to the park today and work out? Like what's on the inside burning deep in Brian? Yeah, I'm, I'm really big into kind of energy, right? And, and knowing who you are at your core from an energy standpoint and who I am at, a, at my core is just hard work. That's, it's, it's kind of a positive obsession. So everyone has, can have some vices or some things that they do repetitively that are really good. And I have more of like positive obsessions. So when I was growing up, I got really good at basketball. I'm about six, seven now. I was six, five at 14. And I was nationally ranked my first high school game. They flew us out to Akron, Ohio to play some guy named LeBron James. There you know, you go. So baptism into uh, high school basketball. But what made me good when I think back on it was uh, just an obsession. I would be at home with a little tennis ball dribbling, doing moves, just obsessed with practice, obsessed with the work. And when you put in the work, the success is guaranteed at the end of the day. So as I learned that about myself, I got, you know, injuries and in basketball and I knew I wasn't going to play pro and I had to rediscover who I was at my core. So I had to find yeah. myself again and reinvent myself. And what I went back to was, I think that's who I am. I'm that positively obsessed person who will do the yeah. same thing over and over again until they get 
you know, good at it. And uh, once you, once I get good at it, I'm then in like domination mode. I'm going to continue. So that's yeah. why I am is hard work and going to the park and staying tapped in and staying locked in on the mission is part of that. And my mission is at this point, it's financial wellness. It's just helping other people to be financially free. So many of us are trapped in a job that we hate, working for a boss that we don't even like. And it's the most miserable feeling. And my job is to make you Superman. My job is to turn you into a work imposter where you put on a uniform as Clark Kent and that's your costume. You are Superman now. So you show up to work, you put on this uniform and you're like, this isn't me anymore. I'm Superman. I want to go fly. Yeah. I want to go do what I want to do all day. So my job is to help people with that uh, journey. It's so rewarding and it's just what I love to do every day. I love that word picture of, you know, putting on a costume and I think it applies. I know you work with a lot of folks coming out of the nine to five and I know you work with a lot of entrepreneurs as well. The story for entrepreneurs is that they've already, they've already made that jump from working for somebody else, but the freedom that Superman has, the ability to fly mm -hmm. may not actually be what they're experiencing as an entrepreneur because maybe they're just new or Maybe they're just, you know, they haven't developed teams or systems, or maybe they have gotten all that and they realize that like, okay, I got a million dollar business or a $10 million business. And this is yeah. really great. But like, what do I do with my money? <laughs> Cause I want yeah. legacy. I want something to go on past just my active income business. Because at that point it's still very, it's still very active income. Yeah. And it's, yeah. It, my money's not producing money for me really. Even at that exactly. level. Exactly. As an entrepreneur, even when you have success, you start to realize that your limitation is now time. So we all still right. only have 24 hours in a day. So even as you look at other business opportunities, what you're truly looking for is leverage. How can I get into real estate and leverage somebody else's resources, somebody else's time, but where I can still be 100% owner of those assets? And that's something that you know many of my mentees started approaching me with over the course of time. And they asked me, Brian, like, how can I be you? How can I get these results? But like overnight, what can you do for me? So I created this, this platform. It's called the Boots on the Ground program. And I literally have investors from all over the country, even places like Canada, uh, New Zealand. People are tapping from out of the country. And we're building houses for them in the States. So we're building houses for them in affordable cities. And we do everything. We find the deals. We uh, connect you with the lenders. We full gut renovate the properties for you. We do the tenant placement and property management. And you own everything. We we don't take any ownership stake. So it's really just fee for service. And it's been yeah. phenomenal. It's been growing like a wildfire. But it's been that platform for that busy professional who has the capital and has yeah. the credit and has everything, but does not have the time. They want to spend that time with their family and on the beach or doing whatever they want to do outside of what they're already doing that's successful. Yeah. So that has been kind of that thing that I've gotten into as well for that type of professional. professional. Yeah. I love it, man. The, the, the list of similarities between us keeps growing. You know, I'm not six, seven, but I am six, five <laughs> did play a little ball in my day. And the word obsession is deep rooted in my heart. In fact, I was just doing some, some brand, you know, work with, with a branding coach that I work with just last night. And I really actually felt like the word obsession describes a certain sect of entrepreneurs. And <clears throat> because some entrepreneurs or, or people that work a job, I guess, but since entrepreneurs are listening here, it's like some entrepreneurs want to do a business or get real estate so that they can then go do nothing. Exactly. But some entrepreneurs, <laughs> the ones like you and me are like, I, I, I just want to play the game at a high level and I'm going to obsess all yeah. the days of my life. Now that's going to look different in different seasons. I'm going to take vacations. I'm going to do, you know, chill things, even though guys like you and I don't know how to chill people we that like the word obsessed. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know how to chill. We don't and have that's all, okay. But... That's okay. Yeah. Like we just get, like you said, you got to go back to the identity of who I am. And the identity is let's freaking go, which is obsession. <laughs> okay. So I want to talk about that a little bit because our, our histories are the same, but now you're talking about real estate and then also helping other people. What did you do before? Is it just basketball and then real estate or is there something in between? Give us it's, a little yeah, bit of the backdrop. It's a good question. So, you know, basketball landed me at Columbia university. And when I got there, it was also an identity crisis because we got connected with a lot of alums, former athletes, and they were making so much money with their mind versus their body that it really just shook my whole world Best upside you. down. So I was doing a, a internship for a guy at the New York Mercantile Exchange, former football player at Columbia. I'm in the pits, in the trading pits with him. 
And he says, Brian, you want to go to the NBA, right? And I said, yeah, I'm 22. I'm freaking jacked. You know, I'm, I'm in it. And this is my whole life and identity. And he says, how much do you think Kobe Bryant made last year? I, said, I don't know, 10, 15, you know, 20 million. I don't know. He said, look, I made 30 million last year. So you see that guy over there? Little guy, five, seven, 130 pounds wet, right? That guy made $80 million. He said, this is the effing NBA. I'm Kobe Bryant and that's LeBron James. And I was just like, whoa, you know, this is, this is different. So as I got out and both my parents are entrepreneurs, as I graduated, I wanted to help people. Like I've always been the same person yeah. and I wanted to work in finance. So I got into financial planning. So I'm a hundred percent commission right out of college. Everybody I know is broke. I moved back to Philly. And, and I'm just not making any money. My first year, I make six grand. I'm like paying in gas and tolls to work, right? So I'm paying yeah. to work, but I'm cold calling attorneys for a living and I'm just getting rhino skin. Like my skin is growing 12 inches thick. No, Nothing you can say to me, nothing can, uh, you can do can stop me. And I'm just becoming bulletproof. And it took me two years of saving and uh, planning to save up enough money to get my first deal. So I save, I plan, I get my first deal. I'm afraid. I do a house hack on the FHA loan and I'm getting a little cash flow. Then I get a job up in New York. So now I'm an out of town investor, which is why yeah. I, I love out of town investing now. So now I'm managing this thing from afar. And before you know it, like I, every dollar I get is just going to real estate. So I pick up property number two, then number three. Number two is in South Jersey. Number three was in Baltimore. So I'm just completely out of state, living in New York, investing multiple state lines away. And I just never looked back. I kept falling deeper and deeper in love with real estate. And then once I found Full Gut Renovation, it was, I was hooked. Hook, line, and sinker. Yeah. Like, I was just, let's do this. I, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. That was the vibe. Yeah. I love it, man. Yeah. The <clears throat> The consensus there, really, I guess, is you've always gone back to figure out like who you are. You said identity crisis a couple of different times now, but it wasn't yeah. really that you didn't know. It just that you had to go back to who you knew that you already were. Correct. I had to find you a know? genesis of my success because when yeah. you're, some of us, we, we, we might be successful entrepreneurs, but we don't know why because we right. haven't stepped outside of ourselves to psychoanalyze. Well, how did I get here? Because the journey can engulf you. So I had That's to right. really step outside and say, what made me become nationally ranked? What got me to this level where I was playing at my best, where I was doing my best? Who is that person at their core? Not with the accolades, not with what people tell you and who people tell you you are, even the people closest to you, but who are right. you? Who do you know you are? And once you identify that, you can now use that as your superpower. That is your superpower, is that frequency of energy. That's our frequency is let's go. We wake yeah. up every day fired up because we do what we love every day. We surround yeah. ourselves with our own frequency. And that is yeah. uh, everyone's superpower. Everyone needs to tap into that. But you need freedom sometimes to be able to tap into that. Or extreme failure can can make you uh, <laughs> tap into that because all, everything else melts away and you're just left with yeah. yourself. You have to identify yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. You okay? So <clears throat> you said psychoanalyze. I I love uh, how the mind works. I, I've gone deep on how the mind works. It sounds like you have as well. And so yeah. I want to ask before I get to some practical stuff around like maybe some good decisions because I just genuinely believe decisions, good or bad, come from our thoughts, and our thoughts come from how we treat our mind. You've obviously being a champion or or a high performer for a long time. You've you've done mind work, whether you've realized it or not. I guess my question in all of that is for the for the person right now who maybe doesn't have the history of being nationally ranked at a high level in sports and then, you know, getting their teeth kicked in and building rhino skin through, you know, cold calls and hundred percent commission, like both you and I did for that person who's, you know, running their business and they're, they understand like, okay, I gotta be tough or I gotta have like the let's go, like, let's be obsessed. What can they do now to kind of build some of that up, whether it's mentally physically, maybe both, maybe there's other things that you're thinking of that you can share, but just what comes to your mind when I say, how does someone that doesn't have maybe the history that we do become that bulletproof champion? You got to get mentors, man. You got to get people who've lived it before. Somebody who's even, they're either 10 years ahead of you in business or they're 10 years ahead of you in life. And they can show you, hey, 
if you walk this path or do these things, here's where you're going to go. And they can give you some of the mindset. It's not necessarily important what someone's success is, what their the trappings of success, the car, the jewelry, the vacations. That's irrelevant. What's important is their mindset. What do they feed their mind? What do they listen to? What do they believe? What are their core principles? So you need mentors who can give you mindset and you need to feed your mindset daily because what you feed your mindset will determine your output. So if you don't feel like you have it, go find somebody who does and just ask them this question. What do you read? What do you listen to? And then start reading and listening to what they read and listen to. And you will start to become a version, your version of their success. It will naturally start to manifest throughout yeah. you because it's just part of your input. So I would say the yeah. mentorship is that shortcut. You can shortcut 20 years, 30 years with the right principle. They don't even need to give you the full blueprint. If they give yeah. you one inkling of a principle and say, do this, do that, you'll always be successful and you stick to it you will, you will be successful. There's just no doubt in my mind uh, there. Yeah. Yeah. You said something there that, that caught my attention as far as the blueprint. There are a lot of people who just, just give me the blueprint. I want it done right now. And to your point that you just made is that, okay, fine. Like there are programs. I'm sure your, you know, specific real estate program outlays a, a, a blueprint. This Absolutely. is how you do it step by step. Okay, fine. But what you just said was I can give you the blueprint, but if you don't know how to think, it doesn't actually not. matter because <laughs> A, not. you're not going to do anything with it. B, you're not going to know what to do with it because your brain can't absorb it like you need to at a high level, at this obsession level. Because when you said feed it every single day, we're not talking about you read Think and Grow Rich one time. Or I listen to a podcast like, you know, Brian Grimes right now on Gathering the Kings one time. No, it's like, no, I hit the repeat button over and yeah. over and over. And that's obsession. We're back to the same word now. Yeah. Yeah, and it's assimilating these principles. It's, it's just bringing them in. And C, to your point, because you did A and B, C is when things get hard, you can have the blueprint. But when things get hard, do you have the mindset to push through it? Because business is problems. The, the best businessmen look the coolest while solving the problems all the, all the time, every day. So yeah. they, they, it yeah. seems effortless, but they just have become accustomed to solving problems every day and not complaining yeah. about it because their mindset is bulletproof. So you need the mindset. In fact, my course content, my core course content starts with mindset. When Love I do it. my mastermind calls, we start with mindset. Because if you don't have the right mindset, you have nothing in life. It doesn't matter what you're doing. It, it's irrelevant. Yeah. You have to have mindset first. It all stems from mindset. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. We just had our a quarter three guest speaker in for gathering the Kings and gathering the Kings peer to peer up until this point has been strictly for seven to nine figure business owners here in a few weeks, we're launching a program for smaller business owners and a, a more wealth building program. But these business owners that were on this call the other day, these are not little bitty just got started. Yeah. These guys are doing millions in sales. And I bring in this guy that's, that was on the podcast actually. And um, he's talking not just mindset, but a lot of the deep stuff that we're talking about right now and feeding the exact, the, the, the precise articulation of your life to yourself every day and a format yeah. on how to do that. Obviously, a lot of this stems from the greatest success principle book ever, Think and Grow Rich. But this is real. Brian, what Brian's sharing with you right now, this is real because at every single level of the game, you cannot move forward financially lifestyle, spiritually, in your marriage, in your family, there's, first off, you have to recognize there's always another level. But then once you recognize that, you can't go to the next level without the right next thinking. And it all starts, yeah. like what Brian's saying, it all starts with the thinking. Anything else to add there? I mean, we could, we could probably spend hours here, but anything else to yeah. add just as far as like one last little punch? Yeah, just tying it into real estate, you know, there's just, to become the best version of a real estate investor or developer, it is all about your mind. Like when you when you think about sports, we're both sports guys. They say sports is 90% mental. And a lot of young guys don't know that yet because they're so yeah. physically talented. Right. When I got to real estate, it became 100% mental. There are no, you're not born a gifted, oh, you're tall, you're going to be a good real estate developer. It doesn't matter <laughs> at all. It won't make you good at all. So it's all mindset. Yeah. And when you tap into the right knowledge and program and format, and you're just feeding the right content to yourself, 
with real estate investing and you can think outside of the box when you're in a priced out market and you say, well, Brian, can I invest over there in like Cleveland? And then get a duplex for 80K? Yeah, let me show you how to do that. You're thinking outside of the box. Can I reformat the property to get more cash flow than the average investor knows? Sure, you can do that. It's all mental, this game. And how we play this game, no matter what the market is doing, we always have a strategy that we're just going to pivot around. We go around obstacles uh, with our mind and we invest where the money goes further by outthinking the competition. So it's just even this real estate game, that was part of that transition. They're just going from any physical, even 10% to just all mental and being yeah. unlocked completely. I'm, I'm curious to hear what you think about the stat that you just gave, this 90, 10, or even 100%. The reality of it is, is that <clears throat> they could go to Google right now and type in, you know, are 95% of my actions conscious or subconscious? And yeah. the truth is subconscious, right? So when you think about that for a half second, because this is a, a basis of the, you know, the, the gentleman that had come on the show, this is, I mean, seven or eight months ago, I've known this stat, but he's built this program based around like, dude, like if you really think about this for a second, if 95, 9.5 out of every 10 actions you take every single day, your entire life is subconscious, that means you're not thinking consciously about it. And people don't understand because they're aware of it after the fact, like it happens subconsciously and then boom, right away, they're like, oh, well, I, I moved my mic. No, subconsciously you moved it and then you were aware that you moved it. And that is hard to get. So when I'm hearing you say 90% mental for athletes and it was 100% for real estate, I know that to be true based statistically and then also my, my experience. But what do you say to the person listening right now that's like, I'm like scratching their head, 90%, 95%, really, Brian? Like, Surely I'm, I'm more conscious than that. Surely. But it's not true. What do you say? Yeah, we, the way the human uh, mind is, is wired and how we live our life. We're in this stimulus environment. We have social media. You have all these things thrown at you that we've never kind of lived this experience before. Um, right. You are constantly reacting to your environment. And this is why you need to focus so hard on feeding your mind the right input because whatever you're putting in there that's the initial reaction unless you've done the mind work yeah. to walk around most of the day with no mind this is an intentional i'm going to be of no thought i am not going to be react reacting to things i'm going to have that spaciousness within me this is you know transcendental meditation work that you have to do and some of us have done most of us have not and probably never right. will you are constantly reacting to your environment. So since you are reacting to things based upon your input, you better have good input. So even somebody who's in a, a grew up in a war zone environment, their reaction naturally might be a bit more violent than somebody who grew up in the suburbs somewhere, right? Because their input from the environment is different. So you have to have the right input. You really have to focus more today because so many things you know, the algorithm is feeding you things that you might not really want in terms of your input. You need to become very intentional about your input, which is why a platform like this is so powerful because staying tapped into this platform, you can kind of have some control of your input. You know what you're putting in. Yeah. You know you're getting value. You trust, you know, your host. And that is just, that, that is everything today with what we yeah. have access to. It's everything. Hey, Kings and Queens, Chaz Wolf. I want to talk to you about something that's super important to me. We put a lot of time and effort, we meaning myself and my team, into this podcast, into the content that goes out every single day. And if you have been getting any sort of value or insight from this, we want it to be able to reach other business owners too. So we would love if you would like, comment, share, leave a review, post, share again, <laughs> all of the things on social media, on all the different platforms or even on the podcast mediums of Apple and Spotify. We would love to be able to get our content into more hands, more entrepreneurs, so they can grow their business as quick as possible. Together, we are building a community of like-minded entrepreneurs who are committed to growing their businesses to new heights. So let's do this. Let's help each other. Let's help each other grow. Yeah, I want to put just a little bit of science. I'm probably going to butcher the word, but Brian's giving you guys like really good stuff right now, okay? And I, and I want to just take a second to make sure that they understand this. I'm going to say it wrong. Reticular activation system or whatever is in our brain. It's called the RAS is in essence, what Brian's talking about. It's the filter. And so if you feed that thing, what you want in life, it's going to know what to kick out and what to accept in. 
right? And this is, again, a large part of the program. I even went through his, his whole you know, program, John Mitchell, I think it be it, you know, all of that stuff that I've, that I've been referring. This is stuff that stems from Think and Grow Rich, though, right? And it's the same stuff that Brian's talking about that it sounds like is in his program as well, which is incredible. So if you're thinking for a second that this guy is this, this Raz in your brain is literally keeping out the bad stuff and allowing in the good stuff. Well, to Brian's point, you're allowing in negativity, social media, what other people think, you know, fill in the Fear. blank, right? Yeah. Fears and doubts from naysayers exactly. who've never done it anyway. <laughs> so, yeah, they've never, exa- exactly, exactly. So yeah. anyway, this is incredible. I, 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 we could, we could probably wrap for a few hours on this. I got to move forward because <laughs> I got to know, Brian, you're, you're super intelligent. You're like rocking this business thing. What's a good decision that you've made that we can replicate in our own businesses? The, I would say the best decision, the best decision I made was to be very intentional about staying on the front lines. So a lot of okay. us, and I learned this from, I believe I learned this from the one of 50 cents books, actually. Okay. He did an okay. audio book and I listened to it and he talks a lot about, you know, when he was in the street business, how he learned so much from being on the front lines. And me and you are both sales guys. We've done cold calling. We've been on the front lines of sales. So when you're on the front lines, you learn the most about the consumer, exactly what makes them tick, what their pain points are, what their fears and doubts are. And then you can redesign your product to meet their needs. So me staying on the front lines of real estate allows me to think outside of the box in terms of, well, how do you build a house today to meet the consumer? So I do things like co-living. I'll take a single family property, three beds, one bath. And I'll full gut renovate it into three master suites with a shared eat-in kitchen. So now people, how they want to live today, millennials, they don't really cook that much. They want a studio space, utilities all included, all inclusive, a low rent. There are millions of Americans living on their parents' couch and in the basement because they can't afford that true single family rent. But they'll co-live in studio spaces with a shared common area internet included, utilities included, all of these things. So I start reinventing, reimagining how should people be living today? Not just being trapped in the uh, status quo, but truly staying on that front line with what people want. And when you do this with a property, by the way, you'll take the rent from th- thirteen to 1500 a month to 3000 a month on the same property because you've reformatted it in a way where your end user actually wants to live, but you're only going to learn that by being on the front line. So the real value in any organization is on the front line. So even if you've removed yourself, you better spend your time with your salespeople because they're going to give you the feedback. Hey, this guy said this, this guy said that, and that's going to change your whole business. That's going to 10X your business. Yeah, I love everything that you just shared. Uh, Marketing-wise, being on the front lines, learning the pain points, so good. It's actually, it's so easy that it's easy not to do. And (laughs) most people don't. Yeah, exactly. And people just go out there and spew and pitch and and they're not actually listening. The cool part about the unique design there that you talked about is I have a 22 unit complex here in Kansas City and it's four buildings designed exactly how you just described. It's, you know, yeah. co-living, individual suites, they get their own bathroom, shared kitchen, shared laundry, shared Back. living. And, and more and more of that is happening. In fact, actually here in Kansas City, I don't know if it's like this in your area, but we've had a couple of cities outlaw co-living if it's more than four people in the house and they're not yeah, related yeah. so it's like this is this is happening this is like a thing no, no. and it's coming everywhere and this is this is part of like my me nerding out in real estate every municipality has a different rule related to how many people that are not related by blood can live baltimore four philly three parts of connecticut two florida six texas it's only limited by the bedroom size. So the more bedrooms mm-hmm. you have in the property, the more people can co-live. So it's almost uncapped. So right. it, that is part of your research process to research where you live and what that well, law is. And then you will know how much uh, cash flow you can unlock through a co-living strategy. Yeah. But it's different everywhere. Yeah. I love that. And and the the ending result there is that we're both moving to Texas, it sounds like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, yeah we're gonna, Everything's we're gonna, better in Texas, I hear. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, let's flip the script, Brian. You've been you've been open, you've been honest. Tell us about a not so great hour, a really bad decision that you can share with us that we can stay away from. 
Yeah, I think I think my my toughest my my kind of learning point, my make or break moment within this business was when I fell in love with uh, full gut renovation, and I was just like, this is the path. There was something in my my core that knew. So I go back. I, I played basketball at LaSalle University for a year before uh, transferring to Columbia, and that's in Philly. That's kind of in my backyard. So I go back. I buy three shells on a drugged out block. Like it's just freaking. This is a C minus oh, yeah. class, B class, right? Yeah. <laughs> but it, but it's got inventory. It's three blocks away from LaSalle University, though. So I'm like, this is up and coming. They just built the shopping center. This is this is a gold mine. One was a burnout. One was a tear down. Tear down meaning. The ceilings on the first floor, the first floor is in the basement. And then there's some water down there. So you can go for a swim. And then there's a shell. I hire the cheapest contractor that, you know, gives me the the right bid that I'm looking for, which was one part, one of the mistake in the contractor game, which I talk yeah. about. And um, we get started. This guy ends up running off with forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 and essentially no work done. And that, that pain you feel, it, that pain really drove me to create my mentorship program because I never wanted anybody else to have to feel that. I said, look, if there are people like this out there, then there need to be people like me out there to protect them from people like this. And that's what my whole, the whole crux of uh, why I do this, because something like that, it happens to me. I'm very financially savvy. I can recover. Right. But the average person can't recover from that. And now you've yeah. killed a developer who could have built a hundred properties in a C-class neighborhood somewhere in America transform that community and their family. And that bothered exactly. me. Exactly. That really yeah. bothered me. So that was my big mistake, but it's also one of my biggest values, right? So I don't allow yeah. things that are obstacles or that are pain points early. So these things are here to teach you. These <laughs> things aren't here uh, just happening to you. They're happening for you to learn, yeah. to push you. So it was something that told me I need to go further. I need to now know everything about construction. I need to become the GC. I need to get that knowledge so that it'll never happen again. And then once I got it, I started to give it, you know, back to others so that it never happened to them. So my biggest loss was one of my, and I've lost over half a million to a million dollars in this game. That was just yep. a piece of it, right? You figure it out, <laughs> you live and you learn. Yeah, and I wear, we wear it proudly because we're giving yep. it back in terms of the knowledge. But that was my early pain that became my, one of my biggest motivators to this point. Yeah, the the listener, I want them I want them to hear two things. One is that what you just said is that you 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 received this persistent or this thing and you persisted through it. Again, going back to mindset and training, even the book Thinking Grow Rich, again, this is one of the 31 listed reasons for success is persistence. And so Brian gave an, an amazing example there of what normal what everybody else would have been maybe taken out by. He said, "Well, I guess I got to press in." And actually, yeah. <clears throat> even below that, maybe a sub point is not just press in and just push harder. He said, I need to learn. I need to know uh -huh. so that I can control. Because that's what, in essence, what happened is that you didn't have control. You were just willy-nilly throwing money at people, hoping that they would solve your problem. And, and what a winner does is he takes control of the situation, which is exactly yeah. what he did. The second thing I want to, I just want to give, give Brian kudos here, because that's a king move if I've ever heard one. Turning something into a situation for him where he now has obligation for all of you guys listening right now where he's like, no, I got to do it on behalf of them. That is just yeah. straight king mindset right there where it's it no longer is about me. It's about other people. And so my hat's off to you already. It already has been from the beginning. But I want the listeners to really recognize that this is when warrior becomes king. Oftentimes in a situation where it's like sticky, it hurts, there's a little bit of blood. And he goes, you know what? I'm going to step up and now I'm going to do it for other people, which is king mindset over warrior mindset. You want to add anything to that? Yeah. No, definitely. You know, I've, I've been told that in the past, even guys around Philly, because, you know, the guys around Philly, they, they definitely know me in the development space doing hundreds of deals. And they're just like, you're like the LeBron James of this of this game because you facilitate. You could dominate the ball. You could do whatever you want. You have the green light, but you still pass the rock. You still facilitate. You still team build. You They know that at my core, uh, I believe real estate is a real estate ownership is a solo sport. It's like golf or tennis or track and field, right? It's a solo sport, but real estate development is a team sport. You need a lot of professionals, yeah. a lot of people. And even as a developer, I had this decision to make after building 250 properties was when I kind of made that decision and, and started the coaching business. I wanted to have more national impact. So I could either go out and try to build more properties personally, or I could build more people. 
more developers nationally who could go in their communities and build 250, 300 properties. And I knew for a fact that I could have more national impact in C-class neighborhoods across America by building more developers and, and tapping more people in. So I just made that, you know, that's my selfish agenda behind all of this is I want the C-class neighborhoods to look like the A-class. So, yeah. and, and this is part of that facilitation is building more developers and putting them in a position to make millions while creating better communities. Yeah, I appreciate you sharing that. You've you've mentioned it a couple of times. I was going to point it out that that's, you know, when I asked at the beginning was the deep seated why you gave me uh, the the winner why, which I totally I see that in you. You're a winner. It doesn't matter what the what, what the the purpose is. You're just going to win. But underneath that, for you for sure, is you seeing this almost like justice come to communities that maybe haven't been given a chance or maybe were given a chance but squandered it whatever the scenario is for that specific neighborhood or town or part of the country there's just a story there really and you're like coming in king on a horse going no we're going to change the story and we're going to do yeah. it through real estate and making it making the baseline you know we're going to level up the baseline yeah. i just so appreciate that in you this is what we're this is what we do as kings but i'm, I'm saying this out loud because not that because you need me to boost your ego but but because the listeners need to hear this is what it looks like to freaking do it so i just appreciate that i want to ask you about family because i'm big on really all five dimensions of life uh, i kind of mentioned them earlier there's obviously business there's family there's lifestyle there's spirituality we, we've talked about most of them but specifically going hard and being obsessed in your business a lot of people think that you can't do that and then be obsessed in the other areas that there has to be a balance and guys like you and me don't know what the word balance is it doesn't exist actually so what are your thoughts on going deep or obsessing as you said in all of the areas all at once I believe my father told me this and it stuck with me. He's, he's given me so many principles. It's, it's crazy. But how you do anything is how you do everything. That's and right. this was kind of, you know, a, a schoolwork. I mean, I've, I've been, I'm a smart guy, right? But schoolwork, how you do your schoolwork, how you do that. He was like, how you do basketball? I want you to be like that with everything. And I've kept that with me. So even how you do business, if you're obsessed with your business, how you do anything is how you do everything. If you're not obsessed with your uh, family at an equal level, if you're not obsessed with your children and their upbringing and what they're feeding themselves and their happiness, what they're eating, what they're consuming, if you're so not good. possibly obsessed with all of these things, then you're going through the motions. You haven't realized that how you do anything is how you do everything. So when you lack with your family, you will slack with your business. This is also, you asked me why, well, you didn't ask, but why do I go to the gym every morning? This is why, because I push myself in the gym by myself out in the park. I'll be out there. It'll be 17 degrees. I'll be out there with gloves on and three hoodies. I'm going <laughs> because I need the mental clarity, but I understand how I do that is how I'm going to push myself when something hard happens here is how I'm going to push myself with my family. I'm going to do whatever it takes. I don't believe in balance. I believe in running as hard as you can for as long as you can. And then when you need a blow, you put your hand up, you say, coach, put me on the bench, give me a Gatorade, give me 60 seconds, and then put me back in the game. And, that, and that's what it is. So I'm gonna run as hard as it, I can, because that's the only way guys like me and you can relax, is when we know yeah. we left it all on the court. Then we can that's sit right. there and say, I got nothing left. <laughs> but then we get a second win, and we do it again, because that's what we that's do. Right. That's, that's, that's right. just who we are, and that's all we know. Yeah. And it's not over. A lot of us believe like I did a, a mastermind call the other day and an older guy, you know, came in the chat and he's just like, hey, I'm, I'm just thinking about getting started. And I know because I'm on the front lines, I talk to everybody and I'm just like, listen, I, I need everybody to know. He didn't even say it, but I, I could sense it in the spirit. I was like, if you're on this planet, you're here to fight. If you're still alive, you're young and you're here to fight. There are people who've checked out for this planet well before your age, no matter what age you're at. So if you're here, it's to fight. You're here for a reason. You're here to go oh, yeah. after your dream. You got to stay motivated. You got to keep pushing no matter what. Every Everything is not about winning all the time. It's about pushing even in the face of the loss. The good guy in every superhero comic, uh, comic book, the good guy is always about to lose until the end. Right. He's always about to lose. He's always overmatched. He always has the odds against him. So it's not just the win. The win is only made powerful by the struggle, by when you're not winning, by when nobody's looking. 
you're still grinding. You're still pumping. You're still um, making sure you're doing the things to build every day, to grow. You don't have to be the final product right now. You just got to keep growing a little bit better. You only have to be, Usain Bolt is a hundredth of, of, of a second faster than the next guy. He's the fastest man on the planet. You only have to right. be like 1% better than the competition. You don't have to be 100% better. So just keep yeah. pushing. Yeah. And to, to second that, it's really not that even hard to be more than a tenth better than competition because most people are out there just being. They're going through know, the motions. They're, they're going through the motions. Exactly. They're not living life to the, the real potential. I want to I want to ask your opinion on something because we're talking about, you know, this this mindset and, and age and you're not done yet. I just went on a, on a river rafting trip in Colorado with uh, five or six of the kings from the peer-to-peer -peer group and one of which i have really i mean i've gotten to know all of them well but one of which has a target in his mind not even a target it's like a conclusion i'm i'm living until 108 and <laughs> and then and there, there's this other guy who turned 46 on on the on the trip the other guy who i was just referring to is also 46 and so we had this discussion because the guy turning 46 up until this moment had been had said things like you know oh getting older or, Oh, can't, you know, like it, just that whole motion of I'm getting older. It's my yeah. body, my, this, my, whatever. And the other guy, same age is like, dude, I got over half my life le left. I'm like, I'm in the best shape ever. I'm like, I got yeah. so many more bring years and exactly bring it on. And so it's like that even in itself is a thought only simply a thought of I'm not dying until mm -hmm. I'm 108. Now who knows, but <laughs> If he's, yeah. if he's giving that to his brain every single day that I'm not dying until I'm 108 and he's only 46, why am I slowing down? Everything that you just gave that guy when he came on your call is the exact same thing. Like, there's no reason to slow. I mean, if, if you're here, why would you not? Right? You're here. Yeah. You're here. That means your body's functioning. That means you're alive. That means you're here. So go. You know, don't yeah. think about any of this stuff. As you know, uh, most of these thoughts are lies anyway. So you don't need to spend so much time thinking anyway. We, we're, a lot of us are stuck in our own mental trappings. Our own uh, negative self-talk is what's holding us back mm -hmm. more than anything. So free yourself, exactly. stop thinking, just tap into a better mindset than yours and get the results of that mindset. It, be, it, 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 it will start to echo within your head if you just keep feeding yourself the right mindset. Yeah, well, the mindset is the initial piece, but then you got to surround yourself and... For this exact reason, this is why I know you and I are going to be buddies for a very, very long time because you don't come across people like this and then go, okay, well, see you later. <laughs> we <gotta> see you. <laughs> you know, because like that, it just, first off, we, we, we understand it, like greatness recognizes greatness, but the mindset piece is just like, I'm only letting in the ones that are going to add value and Brian's doing the same. So it's like, okay, well, I need to get around guys like Brian. Yeah. This is, this is, no. this is what it's about. That is, that is what it's about. And that's why these platforms are so can be so you know magical is because we, we surround ourselves with people who are of that mindset and of that frequency. Frequency is yeah. it's everything and it's in everything. So you have to right. have the clarity to recognize it. And then when you find your like minded frequency, stick, stick with it on a daily basis. Right. You, every day is a new day to reset yourself and, and reset your agenda. I feel like we've been talking for hours. I'm looking over here at the clock, keeping like, oh, my gosh, we've gone over, but we haven't. Whew. But man, I feel like we've gone deep fast. I've got yeah. one last question here for you, and I, I want you just to run with it. I'm going to just give you some, some leeway here. I've never done this before. I'm going to ask you the same question that I always ask, but I want to, I want you to answer it. And then I want you just to like, take us into one of your calls. Like just pretend all the audience members are <laughs> mastermind members of you. And I just want yeah. you to really give the answer, give that success answer. But then I want you to pour out afterwards. And they, and the question is this. If you had the opportunity to reach back into time and whisper in the younger Brian's ear, what would you tell him? I tell my younger self that paid mentorship is better than free mentorship because a lot of us, you know, we want that free mentorship, but the paid mentor is dedicated to you at a different level. The free mentor you can take to a cup of coffee once a year and you can get a little bit of game, but you'll never get that full here's what happened, here's step-by-step, step. here's what to do, that real dedication that's going to accelerate you. So paid mentorship can be invaluable because of the dedication level. I would tell my younger self to never, never look for partners. Look for good mentors. 
Because what you're looking for in a partner is somebody who can bring value to you and who can share the brunt of mistakes or your fear, realistically. You're looking for a partner because you're afraid. You don't believe in yourself yet. You don't believe you can do it. And you can do it. You need the right mentorship and guidance and blueprint. But you don't need a partner who's going to come into your business and take 50% of your profits and not necessarily add the value that even a paid mentor could add. It's, it's a waste of money. So, and you have to look at it like that. The cost of a mentor could be a few grand. The cost of a partner is 50% of your profits for perpetuity. And a lot of us will get that partnership early on, not knowing that we're going to be successful because we're going to stick with it and we're going to get all the knowledge. And then at that point, you don't need the partner necessarily. Some There are some good partnerships. I would argue they're oh, more yeah. bad partnerships than good, than good. So a lot of us run into that pitfall as well. So I would just say, believe in yourself, get, get the right mentorship and walk the path. Don't stay trapped in fear. Just trust the journey. There's going to be hardship. There's going to be tough times. Keep pushing through and you'll be successful. Stick to your mindset, stick to your principles. But that's what I would tell myself is don't, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of walking the journey alone. You will find the, the help or the, the help will, it'll find you if you're of the right frequency, the right people will appear. The needle threads will happen. All of these things, these storybook things will happen for you. You just have to jump. And this is what my mentor, my, my one of my favorite mentors told me when I was uh, 24 and when I was this young guy, jump and a net will appear. Jump and a net will appear. He gave me a book, a picture book. There's a guy up high on a mountain and he's looking down. He's so high, there's just clouds below him. He can't see the net, but you have to jump. And when you get down there, you know, that net will appear. And like a trapeze artist, it'll bounce you back up even higher than you were. But you got to jump first. And when he told me that, I jumped. I took the leap. And for all of us, our success is waiting on the other end of that leap. That net is down there, but you can't see it. You got to jump. And and if you're waiting for the success, you ain't waiting for the success. You're waiting to jump. You're waiting to make that decision to jump. So jump sooner and jump alone and trust the game and you'll get rewarded. That's That's what I would say. Just extend the, the, the mic, let it, let it go, <laughs> let it drop, let the fire explode. Maybe my editor can do a cool thing. They're just, you know? <laughs> wow. Brian, your mindset is sharp. You've got an incredible business. You're helping hundreds of other real estate investors and developers now all across the country. If the audience uh, wants to connect with you as just an entrepreneur, they want to maybe get some of that, that game that mindset that you have, or if they want to learn about real estate and they want to yeah. really take their passive income to the next game and their investment game to the next game or the next level, how can they reach you? You can find me in a lot of places. You can Google, you know, Brian Grimes Real Estate or Brian Grimes Explains. You'll find me on YouTube. Brian loves cash flow. That's easy to remember because I love cash flow. So Brian loves cash flow on YouTube. Instagram, Brian Grimes underscore 247 CFU for the 24 7 Cash Flow University. All of these different platforms backlink to a free training on www.workwithgrimes.com forward slash cash flow, workwithgrimes.com forward slash cash flow. It's a free real estate training. It'll show you how to acquire properties for pennies on a dollar all across the country. You don't want to miss out on that free offer. Love it. We'll make sure it's clear uh, in the show notes that they can grab it, get connected to you. And Brian, not only just well done, but man, I'm, I'm glad to know you personally. Like, I'm, you know, the audience is over here now. I'm just looking right at you going, <laughs> dude. Like Thanks for being here. It's been incredible getting to know you. And uh, intentionally, I'm going to make sure that this isn't the last time that we talk. And uh, this is the beauty of, of what I get to do here. I get to meet incredible people. So Brian, thanks for being here. Blessings to you, your family, all the people that you get to help this year in 2023. Thanks for being here, brother. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Thank you for listening to Gathering the Kings today. I hope that you were able to pull out a few nuggets to go apply into your business right away. More importantly, though, I hope that you're realizing that it takes more to be successful than just being by yourself, doing it all on your own, carrying the weight all by yourself. What I have realized, not only in my own journey from multiple businesses and multiple different industries, and now interviewing over two or 300 other very successful seven, eight and nine figure business owners is that it's tough to do it alone. And so Gathering the Kings exists to bring together successful entrepreneurs. In fact, we are putting together one thousand kings specifically who are grateful but not done we're intentionally assembling kings 
who fight tooth and nail for their business, family, and communities. And here's what we believe, that in the pursuit of excellence in those areas, that it ignites within us the responsibility to govern power and forge a lasting legacy. So if that relates and, and resonates with you, and you know that you need people around you, sharp, qualified, other very successful business owners, I want you to go to gatheringthekings.com. I want you to take a look at what we're doing and see if it makes sense for you to be part of our pursuit to 1,000 Kings. Talk soon.